We can also treat the breast to a three-field technique with a monoisocentric approach. As we discussed, that superior edge of the medial tangent, if you don't do something about it, diverges. You've got a problem here. You've got a hot spot or a cold spot, depending on which, whether you start with the tangent or you start with the superclav. But if you do something similar to what we've done with the field size for the anterior superclav, you're going to end up with no divergence. What you can do is called monoisocentric. You don't need to draw a match line, but I'm going to draw it on here just to demonstrate. So you've got your Y1 down to zero. Y2 is open, and then you have an appropriate width. You treat the superclad, blah, blah, blah. Now, what happens next is you're going to do exactly the equal and opposite. Y1 is going to open. Y2 is going to close. You're not going to move your patient. Only your gantry moves. Now, we've created a situation where we have matched to our own line using the jaws. Now all we have to do is rotate the gantry over and treat. I have the width set inappropriately, obviously, but you can see what happens. No matter where you rotate, the superior edge of that field follows the laser. It stays where you have a non-diverging beam. No matter where you rotate, you can probably see at the inferior edge, depending on where you're rotating, that divergence becomes more or less, depending on how things are stretched because of the tangent angle. But this match line stays the same. You don't have to move your patient. So once you have your patient aligned, you'll have a three-point setup and then a mark up on the shoulder. Essentially, you can have a tattoo, a tegaderm, whatever you need. You'll set a depth here and then treat, treat, treat. You don't have to move your patient. You never want to move your patient after you have them set up, especially in a technique like this. If, if you use one of the other three field techniques, you're going to have to physically move the table, but never physically move your patient after you've delivered any radiation. The reason being is because you don't know exactly what's going on internally. You can go ahead, move the table all you want, but that patient's physical body should never move. With a monoisocentric technique, not even the table moves. You get the patient set up and then they lay perfectly still. The table stays perfectly still. The gantry does all the work. You rotate the gantry, setting the appropriate field size. So you treat the medial, the lateral, rotate up, close the field size and open the field size appropriately to account for what you want to treat without ever moving your patient. You have perfect match lines and you don't introduce as much human error to the treatment because the machine's taking care of all of those nice little match lines. Every time you move the table and move your patient and kick the table and draw match lines on, every single step of that process allows a possible mistake to happen. It could be perception of where the match lines really are. It could be how sloppy I was today putting the match lines on. It could be that I was imprecise when I eyeballed the match line in out. I could have been off just a little bit. Okay, so you could end up hot and cold spots and all kinds of different little things because every step a human being takes has a possibility of accidents. But if you have your field sizes set for you, you eliminate all of that human error and human judgment out of it, thus getting you a more perfect treatment.